Come on, the Lord is moving in our church. We're seeing our church grow. We're seeing great things happening. And you know what part of it is? Is there's a unity that God is releasing in our congregation. There's a unity. Distractions are being eliminated. All right? The enemy loves to distract. The enemy loves to get us off mission, to get us off focus. He, he'll even distract us with ourselves. He'll get us focused on ourselves. He'll get us navel gazing. Oh, boy. Oh, man. Don't navel gaze. Jesus gaze. All right? And see what Jesus sees, which is an opportunity to go into a world and make disciples of all nations. Amen? Oh, man, so good, so good. You guys excited? Hey, in 2023, we wrapped up our first year of our Kingdom Builders Giving Initiative. And, uh, and, and it was our first year, it was our first dive into this whole process. Say, And we, we had people towards the end of the year telling us, hey, what is this Kingdom Builders thing? We, we rolled it out last February. We explained it. We did highlights regularly on Sunday mornings. But we saw people going, what is this Kingdom Builders thing? And just for clarity, Kingdom Builders is investing in building his kingdom locally, globally, and generationally. That we want to be intentional about seeing the kingdom of God expand through our time, our efforts, and our resources. And so it's all about praying. It's all about giving. It's all about going. We believe that we're supposed to re return a tithe of all that God provides, that the first dollar of every 10 goes back to the Lord, that we can go farther on 90% plus God than 100% minus God, right? And so we believe that is obedient giving. And if that's something that you are, 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 is not a part of your life right now, we want to invite you into that blessing. Because the Bible says in Malachi that he will throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out a blessing you will not have room enough to receive, that there's a blessing for the obedience. And if this is new to you, I understand there can be financial hardship and there can be previous financial commitments. And, and if you say, Pastor, that's way too much to, to do for me right now, start somewhere, all right? Start with 3%, start with 4%, start with 5% and work your way up. I believe you will see God provide for all of your needs, amen? That's obedient giving, all right? In addition to presenting our tithes to the Lord, we wanna also be generous. We wanna give generously and we wanna move into a dimension beyond the tithe where we give above and beyond our tithe to expand God's kingdom, amen? And so generosity is giving beyond the tithe, and we, we focus our generosity on kingdom builders. And this is, this is something that I've, this is how my wife and I have been giving for years, even before we got here and started this. We literally, we literally do 10%, 10% of our income, and, and we calculate it out, and we, we return that to the Lord. And then everything else beyond that, we designate kingdom builders, because if, if everyone ties, we'll have more than enough resources to provide for the house here, of, of the current, of what the house's current needs are. Because in Malachi, it says, return the tithe to the storehouse. The storehouse in the New Testament is the local church, right? So if we all do that, we'll have enough to, to, to operate the local house here. But we want to see God's kingdom expand. We want to see it continue to grow. And that's why we set apart everything beyond the tithe for kingdom builders. But I want to share with you this morning our number for 2023. Our 2023 total kingdom builders giving, someone give me a drum roll there. Give me a drum roll out there in the crowd. It was $295,030. Come on, give the Lord praise. Over a quarter million dollars above and beyond the tithe. You guys, we raised together to expand God's kingdom in our first year. That's incredible. That's incredible. And you've been able to see a lot of the fruit of the giving right here. One of our main projects for Kingdom Builders, or one of our local projects, was Project Altar. And we didn't get all of it done. Um, uh, you know, we took the resources that came in, and, and I promise you, every dollar went to projects that were outlined in our 2023 Kingdom Builders brochure, and we made revisions based on the provision that was coming in, but we got the majority of Project Altar done in the past 12 months, and you can literally look around and see where your giving went, all right? This is where some of that 295000 we had new chairs, 
and, and, and we got a new, you can hear it. You can, how many, how many can hear the new sound system right now, right? You don't realize this. If you're sitting over here, the, the sound system didn't even go into the gym, the old one. And, and so we, we weren't really, we didn't really want to open this wall up until we had the new sound system and because it just, it wouldn't sound right over there. And, and so you've seen some of that here, but we've also continued to distribute um, the Kingdom Builders giving to our, our local and global partners. And, I, and, and they, we want to highlight some of them over the next couple of weeks. And here's two of them that want to say thank you to us this morning. Check this out. Let's go ahead and run that. Hey, ICLV, it's Evangelist Will Jones from Awakening Ministries International. I am so grateful for Kingdom Builders this year. I want to give you guys just a holy round of applause because you made a difference, not only at AMI, but so many other partners around the world. I want to tell you specifically how you impacted the nation of Guinea, where we've been focusing on the unreached and planning the church in places where it's not. We launched our Philip Project with nearly 100 national believers that are going to be going out every month preaching the gospel, praying for the sick, casting out demons, and seeing Jesus glorified in their villages and towns and planting new churches. Friends, it's already started to happen. I'm telling you, it's amazing. Just last month, we got a report of almost 19,000 people that heard the gospel in four new church plants. ICLV, that's just the beginning. And not only that, we did our evangelistic mission festivals where I'm hoping that many of you will join us in the coming years because we were able to reach nearly 40,000 people with the gospel, friends, and saw over 2,000 people make first-time decisions in a Muslim-dominated country. I want you to get this perspective. Guinea is a nation where less than 1% of people there are Christians, and it is a hard soil. But God is working through your prayers your generosity, and your support. So ICLV, my friend, Pastor Andrew Mason, thank you for Kingdom Builders and the impact that you're making in the nation of Guinea through supporting AMI. God bless you, and we can't wait to give you another update soon. Hello, Kingdom Builders. My name is Deborah Costello. I'm the Executive Director here at First Choice Pregnancy Services, and I just want to thank you for the investment you've made here in First Choice. It is because of you and the support of so many individuals like you that um, we are able to see so many women choose life here at First Choice. Last year, your donation um, made the lives of 48 babies possible. And we praise God for that investment you've made here that allowed those babies to experience life and it allowed us to share Christ with um, women that are often at the crossroads between hope and despair. And one of those ladies we had last, um, a few months ago, was Tymere. She walked in our doors from Arizona, 20 weeks pregnant with a baby girl. And she ended up leaving here, choosing life. And your church recently just threw a virtual baby shower for her, which was incredible. And she is due to give birth to that child any day. And so um, that is just one of 48 babies that was impacted because of your selfless giving. We also just had a young woman come in here yesterday who is married. She's from Cuba. She's already had an abortion this year. She lives with a family here in town and just didn't feel that it was right to bring another child into this situation as she already has one child. And she went through sonography, saw her baby, heard the heartbeat. And as the sonographers and advocate talked to her, and they asked her what she would do um, if her daughter came to her wanting an abortion. And she said, I wouldn't want her to choose an abortion. And they said, well, what would you tell her? And she said, well, I would support her so that she doesn't have to do that. And so they were able to tell her that there are so many people like you who support her in choosing life for her baby. And so we just want to thank you for making your investment here, not only um, for life possible on earth, but for impacting God's kingdom. Um, your donations last a lifetime. 
And so we praise God for the partnership we have with ICLV. And we want to thank you all for your support of this vital ministry here in Las Vegas. We look forward to partnering with you this year and making much of Christ here in Las Vegas. God bless you all. understand that we're together through our giving we're, we're impacting souls in a muslim nation on the continent of africa and then we're also able to save lives literally save lives here in las vegas and really beyond las vegas because people are flying in las vegas is being set up as a as a destination uh, an abortion destination and she mentioned um, that mom up there who we threw the virtual baby shower for. She flew here from out of state to have an abortion and came into the clinic and saw her baby on, with, with, with the technology there and, uh, and wanted to be a mom. And, and, and the dad said, dad wanted to be a dad. And, and we had the virtual baby shower with the mom and the dad. And they're excited. That baby has been born since that, since that video was filmed. And they're excited to be parents now. And, and when she says, well, first choice... When she says we help save 48 babies, First Choice um, helps hundreds of babies be saved throughout the earth. What she's saying is our giving, particularly the $12,000 we raised, specifically um, was spread across 48 lives that were saved over the past 12 months. Can we just give the Lord a hand? That's just two, two of our partners. We're going to highlight more in the future from 2023. But this is the power we have, and that's why I believe either as you walked in, it was handed to you, or it's in the back of your seat. I believe we have a, a new Kingdom Builders brochure for 2024. Do you guys see that there? Either you got it handed to you, or it's on the back of your seat. So go ahead and pull that out. And as you see there, our goal for 2024, we are believing to raise $430,000 for Kingdom Builders in 2024. And these are projects that will help us continue to expand God's kingdom here in our property, here in our city, and around the globe. Now, I did a message last year, and, and I got, we got a lot of positive feedback, and the team asked me leading up to this, hey, could you do that message again? Um, because they, they thought it would be very helpful for the church to understand what's happening. Because we still get a lot of questions about kingdom builders. Why are we? Why do kingdom builders? What does this all mean? What's the thinking behind it? Well, let me explain it to you. Um, there's this dynamic that happens um, in in people's church experience, and it is it is this. It's like all the church wants is my money. I don't want to go to church. They just want your money. That's why I don't go to church. I know this is new information for a lot of you, right? Right? And, it's, and we're talking about people out there. I know none of you have ever thought this before ever as part of ICLV, right? None of you have ever questioned that, right? I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. I know you have. It's okay. I still love you, all right? It's okay. I know you have. It's okay. Listen, and so what happens in a, in a, in a typical church experience is, is every week, we invite everybody to put a tithe into the tithe bucket of our organization to return a tenth of all that God provides. It's your tithe. And we invite everybody every week, let's be faithful tithers. Let's trust God with the first dollar of every 10. And we're constantly encouraging everyone to jump in because we believe it's a blessing in their life. But you hear about it all the time. And then what also happens at churches is, is you hear about opportunities to give to missions, opportunities to spread the gospel overseas, opportunities to support missionaries in other countries. And so now we say, hey, make sure you're giving your tithe, but hey, we also need to give to missions. We also need to spread the gospel around the world. Everybody needs to hear about Jesus all around the world, not just in America, right? So you, you gotta give your tithes, but you gotta give to missions. I like that. It's a little, little, little clanking sound there. That's kind of how it feels sometimes when you're hearing the offering, right? It's like, oh, I'm getting a headache, right? Just listening to this, right? Some of you, you're like struggling. Someone's about to manifest right now because we're talking about money beyond the offering. Like, oh, we're talking about money again? I came on Sunday morning on a rainy day for money talk? No. I knew I should have come on Super Bowl Sunday. Um, missions, missions. But then, then something else will happen. Then you'll have something that will happen uh, at the church. Oh, man, we, we, have, we have a leaky building. Oh, we need new chairs. Oh, our curbs in our parking lot are falling apart. Wouldn't that be funny? Just try to imagine that for a second. Imagine coming to church and seeing the curbs fall apart in the parking lot. Just imagine what that would look like. 
You don't have to imagine it. Just walk outside in our parking lot. Um, we're working on that this year too. So then you have church, pro- hey, we need, so hey, bring your tithe. Bring, hey, we gotta support the missionaries, but we got some church projects we need help with, right? Right? And then, oh man, we have a situation in our city. We have a need in a school. We have a situation in a neighborhood. We have a community project. We gotta be the hands and feet of Jesus to our lost community. And we have an opportunity to, to, to be salt and light in this tough situation. And we wanna, so man, we need to receive an offering so we can go be Jesus to our city, all right? So make sure you get your ties and make sure you help the missionaries and make sure you help with the church projects. But now we gotta help our city out. Now I'm gonna I'm, now I'm gonna be I'm being lighthearted about this, okay? But the next topic is a serious topic that actually happens. But I'm gonna be lighthearted about it. So you understand you understand your pastor's heart here. Just trying to have some fun, right? Okay. Then what happens is there's a crisis that happens somewhere around the world or in our country. There's a hurricane. There's a flood. There's an earthquake. Right? There's There's disease or famine breaking out in a nation and it's all over the news and we want to do something and we have we have somebody that we know they're on the ground and we have an opportunity to be a part of the solution. We don't want to just sit back and do nothing. We want to do something. And so in light of this this crisis or this natural disaster that is taking place or or war in Ukraine, I remember we we received we raised ten thousand dollars to buy cots for refugees from Ukraine when 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 Russia began attacking Ukraine. And, And so so we want to respond and we want to do things. So now we're going to receive an offering for crisis relief somewhere around the world. All right? And, and so this morning on your envelope, just make sure you mark what your tithe is and mark what your missions is and mark what the church project is and mark what the community project is and make sure you mark the natural disaster relief. And what it sounds like is it sounds like all the church wants is my... See, I know I could get you to say money in church. Okay. That's what the perception is. But, and in some cases, you know, God is the judge of all hearts. In some cases, maybe there's some, some validity to that. But I can tell you as far as right now, today, on this day, in February 2024, that is not your pastor's heart. Our heart is we want to be the church that Jesus has called us to be. And we want to do great things for God. And we want to have a great ministry here in the house. And and, and we want to have facilities that are operational. Praise God. Is anyone, no one's getting leaked on by by the rain this morning, right? Praise God. That's because of your ties. That's because of Kingdom Builders giving that we're able to do stuff around this property, right? On these 13 and a half acres, right? And, and we want to be able to be, a, be salt and light in our city. And we want, to see the, we want to see the gospel spread in Muslim nations in Africa. And we want to see the gospel spread in Nepal. And we want to plant churches all over the world and, and, and partner with other Christians around the world. And, and we want to help. We want, to, we want to help out when there's natural disasters and crisis that breaks out around the world, but it can just sound like all the church wants is my money. And so that's why we have a different approach. We want to move all these away. And what we just want is ties, kingdom builders offerings. That's what we want to do. is we wanna have a thoughtful plan and we wanna think ahead a little bit and we wanna condition our giving muscles on a regular basis. We don't wanna wait for things to fall apart. We don't wanna wait for the emergency to to break out. We wanna be conditioned so that we can be responsive for Jesus. And so that's what the 2024 Kingdom Builders brochure is with all those local and global projects. That's what that represents. It represents us being ready to be a blessing. You say, well, $430,000, that, that, that's a lot of money. If you were to take our average adult attendance in the month of January, average adult attendance, not counting the children, um, what it works out to about is if everybody, if everybody gave $45 a month this year, we would raise $430,000 for Jesus to expand his kingdom. That's it. That's it, $45 a month. Now, here's the thing. Some of you, and it's 40, it's, and just to be clear, $45 above your tithe, right, above your tithe. And for some of you, that may be difficult. 
For some of you that may, may like, Pastor, I'm just trying to do the tithe thing. You know, now you're asking for a 45 above the tithe. And I understand that. Do something. Step out in faith and do something for kingdom builders this year. All right? Some of you, you can do more than $45 a month. Right? And if everybody does their part, if everybody participates according to the level of, of obedience that God is calling them to, I believe we'll have more than enough to do everything that God has called us to do as a church. And the key is, is not um, doing the most or that you're the one doing the least. The key is participation, that we're all participating. And we're, all not, we're not leaving it to somebody else, right? And so what you have there in your 2024 Kingdom brochure is there should also be a pledge card. Go ahead and take this out. Let me see that you guys have these. Go ahead and take this out and hold it up high. Hold it up high. Let me see. You got, everyone should have one of these. Everyone should have one of these. Come on, get it out. Find it. Get it out. Find it. Get it out. Hold it up. Hold it up. Keep holding it up. Keep holding it up. You need some exercise. You've been sitting for a while. It's okay. Just hold it up. Hold it up. There we go. There we go. Now we're getting the blood flowing. That's good. That's good. Someone just woke up their neighbor. Okay, that's all right. And so here's what we want you. We want you to pray over the next two weeks. We want you to pray about what you can do for kingdom builders in 2024. What can you do above and beyond the tithe throughout the entire year? And we want you to make a commitment. Now, this is not a card for you to fill out and keep to yourself. And I think we had some few. We only got 120 of these cards back last year. Um, and so I knew we were going to have more than that giving. We ended up with, I think, three to 400 people giving to Kingdom Builders last year. So I think we were a little confused on the pledge cards. We want you to turn this back in into an offering bucket. Um, if you're one of those really, like, awesome Christians, maybe you've already thought about this and you know you can fill it out and, and drop it off you know, on your way out. But over the next two Sundays, we want you to bring this back and drop in the offering bucket. And we're going to do something actionable with this information. In your church center online giving profile, we will actually put this pledge into our system. And when you go into your online giving profile, it will track your kingdom builders giving according to the goal that you put on this pledge. And so you can see your progress and track your progress throughout the year in your online giving profile. So this, this actually will turn this into actionable information for you in your online giving profile. Does that make sense? And so really, I want to encourage you to take this, think about it, fill it out, bring it back on a Sunday. If, if, if you want to drop it off at our accounting office uh, during the week, that's an option too. But the easiest way is to fill it out and drop it in the offering over the next two Sundays. And we will get it in, built into your online giving profile. And, and it's just between you and Jesus. It's not anything, we're not going to publish these things on social media. Well, look, Bill only did a quarter of his kingdom builders giving this year. Let's all shame him right now. Let's let Bill know he fell short. We're not going to do that, all right? This is just between you and Jesus, all right? And, and, but it's, it's a helpful tool. It was helpful for me this year to track my goal. And, and my wife and I have a goal before the Lord, and I won't tell you what it is, but I can tell you this, the goal is in the thousands, we want to raise thousands of dollars to expand the kingdom of God in Las Vegas and around the world. Amen? We want to stand before God one day as stewards of all that he entrusted us, and we want to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. And as a pastor, I want the same blessing for you too. And I've had multiple people come up to me over the past year saying, you know, I'm giving more this year but because of kingdom builders, but as I'm giving more, I'm noticing my income is growing too. I had, a, I had a lady tell me just a few weeks ago, she said, she said, I started giving to Kingdom Builders. When I started giving to Kingdom Builders, my salary more than doubled. More than doubled as I started giving to Kingdom Builders regularly. I don't know what it's going to look like for you. I'm not here to create any guarantees. There's, 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 a, there's preachers that do that. I'm not trying to. I'm just telling you, I believe you will reap what you sow. God is not going to be mocked. And I'm going to explain a little bit more about that. So, Jesus we thank you for what you did in 2023. And we thank you for the open doors that are before us in 2024. I pray you'd speak to us over the next two weeks, Lord, as couples, as, as business professionals, Lord God, um, as employees and employers. God, speak to us, Lord, about how you want us to leverage the resources you've entrusted us and the resources we don't even know about yet, God. Because I believe there's breakthrough coming for many people in 20. Speak to us, Lord, about what you want us to do in 2024. And we thank you, Lord, for the testimony of what we're going to be celebrating 
12 months from now as we look back on our 2024 Kingdom Builders projects. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. One of the items you'll see on there is our Super Bowl outreach. That's what we're doing. I, we put that down here in faith. I didn't know if it was going to come together. But that's one of the Kingdom Builders projects is the outreach we're doing next week. We're believing for a uh, 100 souls or more to, to, to come to Jesus next week. Amen? Okay. For my sermon this morning, I want you to open up to 2 Kings. <laughs> that wasn't your sermon? I have a short, short message. Man, money, and yes, yes, you'll be okay. It's going to be okay. You're going to sit down for a three-hour football game next week. You can, you can endure this, I promise, all right? You can endure this. 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 38 through 44. You guys are the smart service because you know there's an 11 o'clock service coming. He can't talk forever, all right? <laughs> this is what it says. 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 38 through 44. We have all the notes in our mobile app. Uh, if you want to follow along there, and we'll have the scriptures on the screen. It says, And Elisha returned to Gilgal, and there was a famine in the land. Now the sons of the prophets were sitting before him, and he said to his servants, Put on the large pot and boil stew for the sons of the prophets. So one went out into the field to gather herbs and found a wild vine, and gathered from it a lap full of wild gourds, and came and sliced them into the pot of stew, though they did not know what they were. Then they served it to the men to eat, now it happened as they were eating the stew that they cried out and said, man of God, there is death in the pot. Anyone remember that meal that you had that one time? You remember that meal, right? It went over to that, that friend's house the first time you had their cooking. There is, anyways, I'm just saying. There is death in the pot and they could not eat it. How's it taste? Oh, this tastes great. Oh man, I ate before I got here so I might not be able to finish this. Um, verse 41. So he said, then bring some flour. And he put it into the pot and said, serve it to the people that they may eat. And there was nothing harmful in the pot. Verse 42. Then a man came from Baal Shalisha and brought the man of God bread of the first fruits, 20 loaves of barley bread and newly ripened grain in his knapsack. And he said, give it to the people that they may eat. But his servant said, what? Shall I set this before 100 men? And he said again, give it to the people that they may eat. For thus says the Lord, they shall eat and have some left over. So he set it before them, and they ate and had some left over according to the word of the Lord. The title of this short message this morning is Plentiful Living. Plentiful Living. Plentiful Living. In verse 38 there at the beginning of the passage, we see there was a famine in the land. A famine in the land. And when, when there is a, a lack of resources, when there is hunger and starvation, and people are dying from lack of food, people begin to panic in desperate times. People um, lose their wit about them. They lose their way. And, and, and they be, you know, desperate people do desperate things. And so one of the first things we see here in, this is a great little hidden passage in the Bible. This is, this is a great little hidden gem in Scripture, not often taught on. And I, and I love this little passage here. But there, what there was there in verse 38, there was a lack of, it says this, a lack of intention is reckless living. A lack of intention is reckless living. They had, they had got to such a desperate point, there was such a lack in the land, that their desperation was causing them to, to fall into reckless living that they were just grabbing whatever they could find and they were just throwing it in a pot and stirring it together and saying, now put this in your mouths to digest this, right? But it was desperate times. It was, it was just a wild vine. There was just, it was a wild thought process more than it was a wild vine. And when there is reckless living, see the opposite of living in the kingdom of God is living recklessly. Because the kingdom of God brings order in your life. See, when you come to Jesus, he releases his peace in your life. He helps you prioritize your life. See, a, life, a reckless life outside of Jesus, a life of sin, just complicates your world. Sin complicates life. 
But when you come to Jesus, he brings freedom in your life. He brings kingdom order in your life. And that simplifies your life. The recklessness goes away. And so this pot here, this pot of death, it represents living outside the kingdom of God. It represents living according to the ways of this world. And this is kind of what the world does with their philosophy and their approach to life, is they just throw everything in the pot. Well, how do we solve the ills of society? How should we go about being human beings uh, living together? Well, let's throw some humanism in there, and let's throw some atheism in there, and let's throw some agnosticism in there, and let's throw some transgenderism in there. Let's just stir it all up and see if it works. It's funny, if you notice, uh, Vegas has kind of backed off the marketing. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Have anyone noticed that? You don't hear that as much on television anymore? It seems they got a revelation. Maybe it wasn't wise to invite people to your city and say, you can do whatever you want and there's no consequences. I think a funny thing happened. I think people came here and started acting a little crazier than maybe we expected. The city was like, do they know we weren't literal when we said that, that you really can't just do whatever? No, I think they took us seriously. Maybe we should stop running those ads all around the world. Yeah, just throw whatever in the pot and then consume it, digest it, partake of it. No, outside of Jesus, there is death in the pot. But here's the next point. is this, the gospel brings order to reckless living. The gospel brings order to reckless living. The flower, see, he, he put some flour into the pot. The flour was not a, 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 um, an ingredient that was naturally uh, grown and appearing just in, in the environment or in Mother Nature. This was something that had been, flour was wheat that had been taken um, through the mill. It had been milled, ground between uh, two layers of stone. It had been pounded. It had been pressed. It had been prepared, right? This was, this was a key element in the, the Levitical offerings. This was a key element specifically in the meal offering right, that were, that were presented in the tabernacle and the temple. And what this speaks to is, this speaks to the humanity of Christ. That Jesus, though he lived a life without sin, suffered for our sin. And, and Jesus, like fine flour, he was beaten. He was bruised. He was ground down to the point of death. Why? Why? Because like that meal offering made with flour, Jesus was going to be an offering unto God as the substitutionary sacrifice for your sin. No one else has done that. Mohammed hasn't done that. Buddha hasn't done that. Joseph Smith hasn't done that. God bless everybody from different walks of life. There's only one person who's died for your sin and rose from the grave. His name is Jesus. And so the flour is the, the gospel of the kingdom that's been prepared. It's been cultivated. It, it was first planted, and then it was water, and then it was, it was, it was harvested, and, and then it was put through a process to have purpose. And see, when you put the gospel into the, the, the pot of death, there is cleansing, there is healing, there is order. But this, was, this wasn't just um, just to to get the death out of the pot. This was a prophetic act that Elisha was doing. It was a prophetic act predicting the plentiful bread that was on the way in the midst of famine. So three plentiful ways in famine as, as we bring this to a close. If we're going to build the kingdom, we can't just go along with the trends of the world, okay? You've got to swim against the current to reach the higher ground that God desires for your life. So they were in the midst of famine, but God was leading them in counterintuitive ways that weren't, weren't the natural instincts in the midst of famine. And it's the same way for us that God wants to release a blessing in your life, but his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. As the heavens are higher than, than the earth, so are his ways and his thoughts higher than ours. So the first one is this. A prepared life produces plentiful living. A prepared life produces plentiful living. We see there in 2 Kings 4, 41 and 42 that there was a man who comes with 20 barley loaves and some roasted grain. 
the roasted grain would be similar to like maybe popcorn, not like literally the popcorn with butter on it that you have in the movie theater, but it was similar if you imagine that smell and that, that kind of uh, a food product that he brought these barley loaves and, and this roasted grain and he brought a generous portion. It was extremely generous in light of the famine. He wasn't coming from 7-Eleven, he was coming from Costco, all right? You know what I'm saying? Anybody know what I'm saying, right? He was coming from Costco, and they go, where did, and the Bible says this, that he came from a place called Baal Shalisha, Baal Shalisha, and it's, it's not a common city that is uh, talked about a lot in Scripture, but in the Talmud, in the Jewish Talmud, Baal Shalisha had a remarkable reputation for being a plentiful land of great agricultural productivity, that even in the midst of the famine, this, resent, this represented a man coming from a place of prosperity. And it reminds me of Philippians 4.19 that says, My God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. That God will meet your needs not according to your bank account, not according to the stock market, not according to your employer, not according to the government. No, that God will meet all of your needs according to Baal Shalisha in heaven, his riches and glory. There are storehouses of resources in heavenly places, storehouses. When we get to heaven, we're going to walk on streets of gold, the Bible says in Revelation. Streets of gold. Do you have some gold? We're doing a repave in the parking lot. Do you have any gold? Yeah, yeah, I got some extra. Here you go. Thanks for helping us with the repave. There is endless provision in heaven. And God says from that source, your position in Christ, it's from that source that he will release provision in your life according to our faith. And this was a first fruits offering. This was typically something, again, that was presented at the tabernacle and at the temple. It was something that was cultivated, something that was prepared. It was not reckless. It was typically given to God by giving it to the priest, but they're bringing it here to Elisha and his men. They're not at the temple. They're not at the tabernacle. And so we see something thought out. We see something prepared. We see something intentional being brought to a situation where there was reckless thinking. All right, I better get through this. Number two, number two, fight famine with generosity. Fight famine with generosity. They bring the barley loaves to Elisha, and the first thing Elijah says is, give it to the men. Give it to the men. He wasn't a narcissistic man of God. <laughs> Shouldn't that be a contradiction? <laughs> Shouldn't those two things contradict each other? Anyways, that's a different sermon. Um, he didn't say, oh, praise God. Look at the anointing on my life. God has blessed me. This is what you need, guys. You need the anointing like I have the anointing, and you'll be blessed like I am blessed. So learn from me. Learn from me. Hey, I'm praying for you. I hope you guys get something for your hunger and your appetite. Good luck, fellas. Good luck. This is how you're blessed. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anyone experienced this before, right? <laughs> no, his first instinct was share it with the men. This has been brought to me, but it's not just for me. I have been blessed so that I can be a blessing. This is how you fight famine. This is how you, you bring forth prosperity into your life and into the earth. And the last point is this. Worship team, you guys can join me up here. There's a multiplication through an abundance mentality. A multiplication through an abundance mentality. This was a type and shadow of Christ's heart of compassion. He says, give this to the men. There was about 100 men. And his servant said, we don't have enough to give to this, to, to, to the amount of people here. And he basically says, just do it, and you're going to have some left over. And if, you're any, if you have any type of background in Bible theology, I know there's a story that's coming to your mind. If you're taking notes, just write down Luke 9, 11 through 17. It's really in all four Gospels, but it's the feeding of the 5,000 by Jesus. It's the feeding of the 5,000. And there was an interesting pattern that mirrored the pattern in, in the Second Kings passage that we read today. Go back to Luke chapter 9, verses 11 through 17. And you'll see three things that take place. 
First, there is Jesus teaching them. What is he teaching them? He's teaching them the gospel. He's teaching them the flower of the earth. He's teaching them how to cultivate the kingdom in their life. And then the Bible says this in Luke chapter 9, 11 through 17. It says that there was healing, that he healed them of their sicknesses. Just as the flower healed the death in the pot in 2 Kings chapter 4, he, he taught the gospel and it released healing in their souls. And then the third thing that happened is there was a little boy that showed up with some lunch. Okay, that was an exaggeration. It doesn't say he showed up with some lunch. He showed up with five loaves and two fish, to be exact. Less than the man with the 20 loaves and roasted grain, but still, he, he showed up with five loaves and two fish. And Jesus blessed it and told them to start distributing the five loaves and the two fish. As they broke bread and distributed everything, they kept distributing and they kept distributing. The Bible says there was 5,000 men, not counting the women and children who were present. So this could have been anywhere, this could have been 15 to 20,000 people. The five loaves and two fish multiplied to 15 to 20,000 people. And there was, a, there was a miraculous multiplication that took place because of an abundance mentality. You gotta receive provision with an abundance mentality in your life. God is gonna do miracles as you step out in faith, but he wants you to receive it with an abundance mentality. See, a poverty mentality operates from a place of scarcity and limitation. Oh man, I gotta keep this from, I gotta protect this. Oh, this is good, finally. Finally, I have what I need. And really what's happening is there's a spirit of fear that there's going to be loss. It's a poverty mentality. And a poverty mentality will blind you from the ways of the kingdom in your life that will lead to plentiful living. For example, understanding that we serve the God who owns a cattle on a thousand hills. if he's leading me, listen, now let, I always want to balance everything because there's so many extremes out there. I'm not saying to take your rent check and your mortgage payment and put it in the offering. I am not saying that. I am not saying to take out your credit card and run it up so you can put the offering that I want you to put in the bucket. I am not saying those things, all right? Be responsible, all right? But walk in faith, not your feelings, how are you stretching your faith? And are you operating from a place of abundance or from a place of poverty? Because poverty is a cycle. It's a cycle. It's generational. My family was poor. My family before my family was poor. I'm poor. This is just the way it is. Pastor, I know I, there's people that are blessed and they can do what you're doing. I can't do that. You don't understand my situation. Listen. Don't operate with a poverty mentality. It will create a ceiling over the outpouring that God wants to unleash in your life. And I'm telling you, God wants to break the cycle of poverty over your life and over your bloodline. It's not your destiny. I want to break through the family cycles. And I want my ceiling to be the floor of the next generation in my family. I want my greatest height to be the starting place for my sons. Some, some people here, God wants to break poverty mentality over your life. And listen, I, I, I have walked and I've dealt with it. Many of us have. There is no shame or judgment, but I, I, I want to pray for anybody who say, you know what? I, I want to be free from a cycle of poverty, generational poverty, and a poverty mentality. I, I want to break free from that. 
want you to step away from it by stepping out of your seat, standing at this altar. Come on, you want to break free this morning. And the Holy Spirit's whispering to you. And there's an opportunity here to step through an open door of blessing and provision in 2024. Come on, just step out of your seat. Just stand right here in front of me. Give you a moment. Just stand right here. I don't care how much your job pays. I don't care what kind of house you live in. You know. is the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Just close your eyes. The anointing of the Holy Spirit breaks every yoke of bondage. Jesus was bruised for our iniquity. Iniquity is generational patterns. He was bruised. His his body was bent and made crooked for the crookedness in the cycle of our families. He was made crooked for our family crookedness so that we could be anointed to be straightened out. He's straightening straightening out the bent arrows right now in the name of Jesus. Keep your eyes closed. Just open your hands. He's straightening out the bent arrows of a poverty mentality. And he's opening up the eyes of your heart to see all the unlimited resources of heaven right now. He's saying, son and daughter, I want you to live in my house. (laughs) All that I have is yours. Come on, I hope you just, just with your hands out, I hope you just open your fingers wide because that's a key. Don't hold on to things too tightly. Don't have worldly attachments that control you. Hold everything loosely in your life. Because whatever happens to it, God could give you something 10 times better. Hallelujah. When we let go of what's in our hand, God can let go of what's in his hand into our life. Come on, just let it go. Let fear go. Let worry go. Let control go. Yes. <laughs> Let anxiety and stress go. Some of you, you've been struggling with addiction. One of the roots of it is financial stress. You're hyper-focused on the habit, and that's okay. But as you allow the peace of God to heal you from financial anxiety, you will find more freedom in that other area of your life. You're struggling with that addiction because you're stressed out of your mind over your finances. Just release it right now and receive the peace of God. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we release an anointing here. We release an anointing to prosper. We release an acceleration, God, of miraculous provision, Lord God. And that's why we're going to be thoughtful. We're going to prioritize. We're going to prepare. We don't want to just throw a bunch of stuff in a death pot, Lord God. We want to bring a beautifully thought out, well-prepared, intentional offering for your glory. Doesn't matter if it's five loaves and two fish. Doesn't matter if it's a hundred loaves. Doesn't matter if it's the widow's might. Hallelujah, Jesus. There's freedom here. Just wait on God. There's an anointing here. Just wait on him. There's a gentleman right here in the second row. You're sitting down. You're looking at the ground. Yeah, right here. Could you stand to your feet right here? The Lord highlighted you to me. And I saw I saw business over you. I saw business. I, I saw um, generational business. 
know if that meant it was in your lineage or if it's something that's going to happen. But I saw there's there's business. To, is that something that has connective tissue in your life? And, and I saw business doors opening this year. I saw you sitting in rooms with high-level leaders, leaders um, that are at levels of wealth and influence um, that maybe haven't, have, these haven't been common interactions in the past. And the Lord's saying, I'm opening these doors to you, son. And I'm gonna give you favor. I'm gonna give you wisdom. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna bless you. I'm gonna anoint you and bless you. And you're gonna have success in secular arenas and marketplaces, but I'm gonna show you how to leverage it for my kingdom. And the Lord wants you to act boldly when he gives you those leadings because it's, it's gonna continue to open up the outpouring through your life. And so Lord, I just thank you, Lord, for a fresh anointing, God, a fresh anointing for business here this morning, God. And I thank you, Jesus, for a testimony, Lord God. He will be able to share with others, Lord God, to equip others, Jesus. Well, can we all stand to our feet this morning? The presence of God is here. We're gonna, we're gonna close. We're gonna close here in a, mo in a moment. Hallelujah. So everyone just give me two more minutes here. Before we close, you're here and you need to get right with God. I want you to step out of your seat and come down and find a spot at this altar. If you're not right with God, if you haven't been living with Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's reckless living. And today is a day to put the gospel back into the mix. Come on, you're here. You say, I need to get right with God. I want you just to step out of your seat. And I want you just to find a place at this altar quietly right now. But I believe there's one or two people here. Come on. Just want to wait a moment. You're here. You say, I need to take care of some business with God today at church. Just come on down here. We'll just wait just a moment before we dismiss. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You praying, Christians, you praying. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you for your presence that's here. And I thank you, Lord. We're going to do amazing things together as a body. And I believe 2023 is just the beginning, God. You're able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ask or even think. Could I have my altar team just, just get put a hand on a shoulder of someone here at the altar as we close this service out? Just altar team members, you could just come here and just put a hand on a shoulder. Could you just begin to pray over them? Just speak the promises of God over them. Give you glory, God. Can we give the Lord praise here this morning, church? Can we give him praise? Come on. Keep praying here. Keep praying here. Keep praying here at the altar. Listen, have an amazing week. Sign up to be a small group host for our February series launching at the end of the month. And let's go out and let's make as many contacts as we can for Super Sunday. And we're going to see an amazing harvest. Amen. Amen. Are you guys excited? You guys believe me for that? Believe with me for that. God bless you, church. We love you.